Hey, good afternoon. It is November the 12th, 2019. We are in, where are we? Springfield, Tennessee. Springfield. We're in Springfield, Tennessee at the uh, Ball State something something. What is this building? <laughs> Heritage something. Anyway, we just posted, if you were watching, and we've got a real, oh, Ball State. Um, Com yeah. Community College. Community College. Yes. So if you uh, have been watching for a while, we just a little earlier, I was doing a video of somebody talking. For all of you who are not from Tennessee, probably was like, who is that talking in Connie's phone today? That was Governor Bill Lee. So we came up. Um, this is Sarah and Marie. And if you all remember this spring, they went with me to the Tennessee State Legislature and we started tromping and stomping the halls and I spoke before the committee the child the uh, child and family committee and they went with us and went to many 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 offices had sit down talks well Senator Kerry Roberts is one who really had an open ear to what was going on with DCS and listened to the, some of the details of Sarah's case and Marie's case and several other people that went with us and then I kept educating him kind of globally on what those problems were and if a few of you could kind of share since I, I can't it's really hard for me to do while the three of us are sitting here because uh, usually I have to hold the camera and share and talk and it's always so uh, if not we'll just uh, share it uh, a little bit later but um, so we uh, came up here to Springfield for a luncheon and there were probably what hundred you counted how many Not oh really okay I was gonna say a hundred about a hundred people here and um, just, um, I came all the way from Mount Pleasant. I had court this morning in Mount Pleasant and actually made it, which is way on the other side in Murray County. So rushed up here so that I could be part of this and I'm so glad I did. So while we were here, um, if you watch what Governor Lee's saying, he's talking a lot about how us, the people, need to make our communities better and how he wants, um, you know, to just improve quality of life. So I had actually met Governor Lee on his campaign campaign trail, uh, what, a year and a half ago, and I had asked him specifically, it was a very small group setting, and I had told him specifically that I was um, really working for child welfare reform, and I was not happy at all with the way our state agency, the Department of Children's Services, was operating. And he actually told me at that time, he said, I understand because I've actually had an experience with somebody, a young man that I tried to work with through the prison ministries, and once we got him out of prison and got his life in order, DCS refused to give his kids back. So he had a personal experience, so he knew. And that's what I say, and I say all the time, if you don't be afraid to talk about what you hear us talk about and you hear the stories from Family Forward Project because I say within three degrees of separation, everybody has dealt with it. So it may not be the person who's your neighbor, but it may be your neighbor's child, your neighbor's cousin. It may be your hairdresser's um, neighbor, okay? But within three degrees of separation, somebody has dealt with it. 500,000 kids every year going in and out of the system. That's millions and millions of people that are affected. And we all know that it's because of the perverted federal uh, funding scheme. So I got up face-to-face uh, -face with Governor Lee and we got our pictures taken. And I posted that picture with Governor Lee and Carrie Roberts. And I said, I am. I met you on the campaign trail. I talked to you about DCS. I'm a big advocate. I am not happy. I need a person in the governor's office to talk to. And he pointed to the guy standing across from him and he goes, that's my personal assistant. He'll give you his card. So I put my card in his pocket and he uh, gave me his card with his email and phone number and I said, I'll be calling you. So I have filed many complaints directly with the state agency, um, copied many, some of those to the governor's office, copied some of the other state senators. And I mean, every day I'm getting phone calls or somebody sets up a time to consult with me through my office. And I'm just gonna say this is kind of a sidebar because a lot of people kind of wanna know how to do this. I am an attorney, I am in private practice. I do a lot of advocacy on my time, even like during my work hours like this, I do advocacy work, but to do consults with my office, you do have to pay for my consult fee. So no secrets about it, no holds barred on that. I do work for a living, but uh, I'm all the time getting people coming in, consulting, tell me what is going on with their case. 
Uh, and I'm just going to say yesterday I had a young man come in from Williamson County and his child was removed from the, the child's mother because of drugs and she had taken a false uh, order protection against him, an ex parte order protection. They goes to court for his preliminary hearing. No fault of his own that the children were removed. No allegations against him. And the judge tells him at the preliminary hearing, as soon if you get rid of the order protection, then you can have your child. And the order protection got dismissed uh, flat out, like with the next day, and DCS refused to give him his child, and that was 2017, over two years ago. And he's still been fighting. And he's had attorneys who's withdrawn. He had an attorney withdraw at the last minute on his TPR, and they had a trial with him not having an attorney. And the judge even told him, he said, now I'm gonna get the, the I told him to go get the videos because I wanna see it for myself. But he said that the judge told him he didn't even have to stay for the hearing, he could leave. So that's the kind of things that we're dealing with in juvenile courts. The system is a mess. So you all know that um, I have several things that I'm fighting uh, on some other cases as well. So um, I did produce, and I'm going to post this because I want some personal action done on this. I posted, put together this great flyer on stolen, trafficked, and denied about Whitney Manning's story out of Northeast Tennessee. And it's a nice, and actually, if you take a look at this, I'm going to upload them into files on Family Forward. And this is a real nice little way to put together a little one-page flyer. You've got to be able to tell your story very succinctly. You've got to have pictures of your family. And then you're going to have to make color copies so they're real for people. And it's going to cost you a little bit more money. There are some ways that you can print them. Uh, if you can get a color printer or somebody with a color printer, then you can do them. Um, they are, you know, they're, they're charging a lot at the standard places for color print. Uh, color prints, but even if you just get one or two or three and send it to your governor's office. And what I did on this, excuse me, on the front page, I've got uh, Whitney's name and phone number. You can see there, and I'm going to post these. I'm going to upload these and ask you all for a call to action. And on the back, down here in the corner, I've got who they need to call, and I've got the phone numbers, okay? I don't use the children's last names. I use their first names right up there at the very beginning. And then... Um, the one child <clears throat> that did not end up in DCS custody, this little child here that they gave to the grandmother, and this is the grandmother, Whitney Manning. Many of you know her through Family Forward Project. This is her daughter, the mother who they arrested uh, when she left the group home and uh, went to stay with family, and they had people in Virginia actually arrest her. It was so stupid. I'm so angry about that. But these children, this little boy right here, uh, he's been dealing with this for him so long. He just recently tried, I think he's 11 or 12 now, tried to commit suicide in school by hanging himself with a cord from the blinds. So they're now shipping him off to a group home. He's cut off from everybody. He's lost his mom, his dad, his family, his brothers, his sister. He's lost everything. Uh, so also, um, I am heading to Washington, D.C. tomorrow night, late and we have some appointments set up. We have finally identified a bill writer for the uh, child welfare legislation, and we are we have an appointment set up with her. Uh, it's in all the, the writing of the legislation for Title IV-E comes through a subcommittee of the House Ways and Means, and it's called Workforce and Family Support, I think is the name of it is the subcommittee and there's only about, I mean, out of 493 congressmen, there's only about nine or 12 maybe that are on that particular subcommittee. So that's the, the committee that we have to start talking to and then we have to go from there and talk to all of our legislators. So I'm gonna upload that, um, watch for us. We'll be doing some lives, some photographs, etc. from DC. Uh, we have uh, ABC News is coming in on Friday. Uh, to talk about a particularly one case, and I'm going to participate in that. That's a case out of Arkansas, uh, but we're going to hopefully also educate them on just the system in general. Uh, so anyway, Mike and Progress guys just trucking along step after step. I have been blocked from 
posting to the Family Forward Project. That's why this is appearing on my standard page, which I, I always do my lives from the group. I never put them on my uh, profile page, but they Facebook won't let me do it. And I guess they did that. The last time I made a live, I started sharing it to a lot of groups, and then they just like, bloop, blocked me. So the computer went, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> They got real nervous. So they blocked me until November the 15th. However, oddly, I can post to my um, profile page, my homepage, so because of, I see some of you are watching. So I uh, want you to... Um, to share it, please, and then I'll share it as well. And ladies, would you like to say something today? <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed. So Sarah has a case pending right now in um, Knox County. In Knox County, and I'm actually representing Sarah. And I'm sure they're stalking us and watching us to see if we say anything. Um, although you, although she asked the judge specifically if there was a gag order on her case, and he said no, and we have the audio from the court. However, then an order was entered about, but then he said something else about uh, he didn't want these kids' lives talked about on social media. So we're going to honor that. We're not going to talk about that particular case. There will be a day when we can go through that step by step. And I, we'll get there. And she's doing an awesome job for me and my children. Yeah, and we will, you know, these gag orders are totally unconstitutional, but I've said this before, when you're in the middle of a case and you're like pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing to get through it, honestly, you just can't, you just don't need that hiccup of trying to deal with the gag order issues. And I know somebody recently posted that they were going to defy everything about their gag order and post their story and pictures. I'm not complaining about that. I love for people to tell their stories. I just want you to know that we can't really, uh, I can't really, if they, if they are punitive to you because of that, um, I can't really pull you out of that swamp at this point. We do. I am working on a lot of other issues in federal court. Uh, so I also, oh yes, so also I heard really good news from Iowa last night. Um, I can't, I, I, people share things with me and then they're like, don't tell yet, don't tell. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm on live all the time. What do you mean don't tell? So I can tell you though, because I want everybody to stay encouraged and keep moving forward, that Iowa has a uh, person in the legislature who's going to introduce a great bill. I got a copy of a bill that's being introduced in Nebraska that has to do with the Families First Act. It's going to be introduced at the state level. Uh, and then I have a new attorney contact in Oklahoma I'm excited about to get to know. There is a advocate in at a university in Arkansas that is wanting to put together some information for um, the uh, within the university setting, which I'm real excited about. I also made contact with Dr. Monica Mitchell out of, um, hmm, let me think where she's at. I can't think off of the top of my head, but anyway, she co-wrote a article with Vivak Sankaran from the University of Michigan, who's a lawyer, and we posted that. Uh, it's about, um, it, is the cure worse than the problem or something about how the children that are removed and put in foster care about the damage that's done to them. And she has some, um, I asked her to share her articles with me about the damage that is done to children. It's about all the amb ambiguity that goes on to their life, the spatial ambiguity, the, the time and space ambiguity, their security, everything that's secure about what they know about their world is shaken up. So she has shared that with me. I can't share the specific articles because of some uh, copyright issues. However, they will be a good tool for us to use to educate. So I can use them to educate. I can talk to you about them. I can talk to you about the findings in them. Uh, it's just that I cannot uh, pass them around for reprinting. Um, we do need experts who can come to court and testify that children who are put in foster care do suffer psychological damage. And that's, uh, she's gonna be a great resource for that. So let's see, who else? Um, also, I don't think I've talked about this. I have uh, an attorney in Massachusetts that I think is uh, working really hard. She reaches out to me once in a while uh, to discuss some things. And if any of you are in the western 
part of the United States. Sean McMillan is doing a seminar on December 6th and 7th. I was able to watch online his last seminar. He does a really good job on civil rights issues. It's um, If you're not a lawyer, you need to take a lot of good notes and listen very intently because he really gets down to the nitty gritty about substantive due process, procedural due process, what a state actor is, what a state action is, and how you start identifying what's going on in your own cases. And honestly, that's what you're gonna have to do. You really have to identify for yourself what's going on in your case, who is violating your constitutional rights, whether or not they have immunity, how you overcome immunity. I just filed four briefs in Wendy Hancock's case. Wendy, are you on there? Um, to try to overcome immunity and get some things dismissed. There are 14 defendants. I know we're gonna lose some of them. Um, we've already opted out of prosecuting Smith County and um, I've got a couple people that didn't get served, so I'll be non-suiting them out, but uh, what they did is horrendous. Uh, I was supposed to have, for those of you keeping up on the criminal aspect of it, because every time I go around now and see people in my social circles, I'm like, oh, by the way, they had me arrested. I just wanna see how many people know, and I'm gonna tell you, everybody I know, or even halfway know, knows, okay? So they, they know in Knox County. <laughs> they know in Knox County. Yeah, just random too. That yeah, was like was random. Brought up. Like, how did they even find that out? I mean, um, that wasn't they like- They stalk you, they stalk Yeah, you. so um, I was supposed to go to court last Friday, last Friday, and um, the state has not produced discovery yet, so they needed to push it to January 31st, and I'm sure they watch and stalk me to see if I say anything else about it. So um, I want to, and I was just talking to somebody here and I'm like, okay, so if they make me go to trial, it's gonna be a really interesting trial because we're gonna really expose everything that they do and I'll get to tell a whole jury with undivided attention, right? <laughs> like they cannot bat an eye, they have to listen to me tell the story about how, what the juvenile courts do to families and how Title IV EE funds, uh, how destructive it is. So, um, uh, we got, I think going to DC, we probably got about six people going and I've got people already setting up, um, setting up appointments and everything. So it's going to be kind of a slam bam trip for me. I'm going to fly in late, late Wednesday and come back early Saturday morning. So all I have is two full days, Thursday and Friday, but I know my way around it there now. And if you want to post, I can read family forward. I just can't comment. <laughs> I'm in probation, so I cannot comment. If you have a particular Senator, I think we are going to try to reach uh, Senator Biggs in uh, Arizona because you know the big scandal right now is the Arizona, Arkansas, Utah child trafficking uh, scheme with Paul Peterson of getting the Marshall Island women to come and basically hold them hostage until they have a baby. And you know, I had a case in Tennessee of a, a forced adoption and the Tennessee courts did everything they, that I was trying to sue the people who were involved in it. The Tennessee courts did everything they could to shut it down shut it down, shut it down. So um, they were like, ha ha ha, it's not child trafficking. We just were trying to find a wonderful home for this poor little baby. So um, yeah, that's what they did. Okay, so what about you, what's going on? What are you doing with your, um, to help keep parents in East Tennessee? <laughs> well, I came here today Good. and I did get great knowledge. It really did hit home when Governor Bill Lee said that we, the people, have control here, not the government, not um, the acting officials and stuff, that we, the people that are going through this. Um, my, my case is closed, pretty much. Um, I, my children are all adults now, so emotionally I can be free. So I've been taking a little bit of time to heal and to get realigned. And I think this is a, a great, great, great idea, um, what you've shown us here. And so Connie, you are just such an amazing, amazing person to have on our side. You're so knowledgeable and so willing just to help. And she honestly does care about the children. 
and she gets the children are the stability of our future and you mess them up now what hope do we have for a future huh. and even though dcs was not a part of my case um this experience through the corruption of the family court system well, they has were earlier been in your life in my life yeah, in my personal life yes well and then your kids too um right no, DCS has not really been a part of, oh, well, my adopted, I do exactly. have adopted children. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean. I think they're involved in everything. They yeah. are. <laughs> I mean, and they were, I mean, that, your adopted kids' involvement with them mm -hmm. affected them. Yes. So. Well, I don't, now this is how my case went, Connie, because I was, because I came through the foster care system, I was a top-notch advocate for my children. So at that time, Ben Sparkman was the DCS commissioner because I was standing for the rights of foster children that were in my home. And he got in my face and said, if you don't back down, you'll lose your own children. Right. So in standing up for the rights of foster children, because I had come so many years through the system. Right. Um, I was standing up for the foster children and making sure that their needs were met and they were provided every sense of care and not bounced from, they were in abusive foster homes right. is what started it all. Right. They left my home and went to a very abusive foster home. And so when I went to bat for them, the top people got in my face and said, back down or lose your own children. Exactly. Yeah. So, and we, know, we, we can tell, oh my goodness, just from a little bit of time DCS has been involved in this, they do not follow through and they don't have a clue what's going on with the children right and getting getting them help and stuff yeah yeah and i will say although we cannot tell the details in sarah's case that um dcs was supposed to do things already that they have not done right. <laughs> and um and again can't talk about court proceedings but i'll just say we pointed it out <laughs> we pointed yeah. it out when we had the opportunity and, um, and the judge was like, and yeah, and go sit down. <laughs> yeah, it was not to us, to no, the DCS. To I mean, he was not happy. So one, if you can point out what DCS is doing, I mean, I'm just going to tell you globally, the courts pretty much kiss their toes, right? Like their little leather toes when they come in and do let them do whatever they want. The perm plans are a disaster, what they're doing to perm plans and uh, they treat people bad. They just treat people bad. I'm just going to say, they treat people so disrespectfully. So Guardian Ad Litem. Yeah, but DCS, I mean, there, there are, I mean, of course, Guardian Ad Litems are paid with taxpayer money, too. But yep. DCS is paid with taxpayer dollars. And, you know, and I've stood in the courtroom and I say, and said, look, there's six people on this, the taxpayer's payroll on the other side of this courtroom. And I'm the only one in this room paying taxes that's paying their bills. So... Um, so it is, um, you know, it's, it's important that they understand and that they respect that they work for the taxpayers and that that's what they're there for to begin with. And they should start with that premise. Mm -hmm. And that has to be something that we have to shove down their throats. So, and we, I agree and, with Whitney. Mm -hmm. They need gone too. The yeah. GALs. Yeah. And, um, and we need to get DC. We've got to convince DC that they are, if they're not going to help families, if they're not going to toe the line, then they need to be defunded and they need to lose their funding. And I've talked to Congressman Green, I've talked to Senator Blackburn, I've talked, we've been to Lamar's office. You need to find out who your congressperson is, who your state rep is, who your governor's liaison is, and you need to get their name and number. Just call them up, okay? You have to get them on the phone. You can send emails, which is okay because you can keep pounding them with emails that's fine but you need to call their phone number there's a phone number on the website call them up say who do we talk to about and tell them what you want okay because we are the taxpayers we are the public we are the citizens the policies need to be intact before we can get laws to support them I can I just say something to I see Michelle Walker there saying that um, her case is closed and they lost and mm -hmm. I don't know your case at all but if you have proof and you have a, a st stable case, maybe it's lost in the court system, but you have to expose that. You can't just take it. You can't just tuck your tail, sit on your couch, depressed, don't leave, lose your job, um, get poor health. You just can't do that because mm -hmm. then they beat you. You haven't lost if you're still telling your story and if you're mm -hmm. still standing by the truth of your story. 
That's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. You need to tell your story, share your story, put your kids, the pictures that you have of Mm -hmm. your kids, put them out there over and over and over and over and over and over, right? Because these kids are going to come home. They're going to come home and... Um, and, and we're, it's, you know, in the days of social media and DNA, you know, this is not going to, they're not going to get away with it forever and expose the social workers. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to tell you this. There's a case out of seventh circuit. It's an Illinois case, but it's a federal case where the ACLU years ago went to court because it was against the law to videotape a police officer, right? It actually was against the law. Mm-hmm. And the ACLU took that to court and they said it is a it is a First Amendment right to videotape public employees in their line of work, okay? So you have a right to videotape every social worker that walks through your door. You have a right to videotape them coming up to your door. You have a right to videotape them coming out of the courthouse. Shame them. You know, and I know I'm going to get blasted for this because they're going to say, Connie Wrigley is talking online about not respecting DCS. Well, you know what? You're right. It's going to be the walk of shame. So uh, we name them, and it's the walk of shame in the federal lawsuits. You get to name them and talk about what they did, Mm -hmm. and you've got to publicly shame them for what they're doing. The secret courts, the secret behind closed doors, deals. I mean, police officers get shamed if they're doing the wrong thing Mm -hmm. and we need to be doing the same thing for social workers so that social workers either don't want that job or they're willing to act ethically and respectfully to the people that they are serving and uh and also oh and this is more news i forgot to tell you this Uh, i'm not going to get into all the details of this but i'm just going to say that dcs was court ordered to do a home visit on a certain day and time and they didn't do it and you know what? They didn't bother to call and, and, and you know, say, I need to reschedule or anything. No, they just, like, didn't, didn't do it. That's contempt of court. And if that were a parent, that parent would be going to jail for contempt of court. So it is that we lost because of no bond. Caseworker was fired, and they quit letting us see them a year. Yeah, no bond. You're right. They destroyed your bond. Yeah. So, but your story's not dead. Your case isn't over as long as you keep it alive. And But you have to do it from a healthy mm-hmm. standpoint. You can't mm-hmm. do it from desperation of um, the depression that comes with losing your kids. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, ladies? That's it. We love yeah. you, Connie. <laughs> and these two are going to be helping me. Hey, the General, General Assembly, Assembly is coming back together yeah. in January. Mm-hmm. We're yes. so excited. And I, I usually come down here once a week, sometimes twice a week. So if anybody wants to carpool or ride with me. If you just want to learn. Yeah, if from, you just want to learn. We were newbies. Yeah. <laughs> from the Roan County, East Cumberland County. And we really need, I mean, I have to coordinate the day, so I have to plan ahead or get it on my schedule. But when I walk in to see somebody, I really need somebody from that place with me, mm-hmm. okay? So I'm willing to be your mouth and be your voice piece. If you are from, like, we have some key players, Nashville, uh, you know, um, we've got... Um, uh, I can't even think of them right now, but there are certain legislators that that know kind of know the story. Mm-hmm. But I now need to drag somebody with me so I can say, so I'm Connie Regulian, blah 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 yeah. blah, and this is Sarah. She's in your district, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so because I can tell the tale, I know the story. So also the same thing with other states. I in talking to uh, Iowa. Uh, last night, I said, you know what, I'll come out, I'll do this, some talking too, and I'll go with you. So we, um, so that's what you need to do. Pennsylvania, I've seen a lot of posts lately from Pennsylvania. You've got a great politician up there by the name of David O. Apparently, they got in, involved in his life because of a medical kidnap thing. So we need to get Pennsylvania wrapped up and organized so we can get there. I've seen a lot of posts from Alaska. Alaska's in really bad shape. We need to get Alaska going. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, any I've set up Family Forward for many of the states. I haven't set them all up. But check and see if there's a Family Forward for your state. Mm-hmm. And uh, just so that we can get people from each state kind of organized to start making legislative changes. 
Okay, so I am heading back to work. My friends here are going to get back in their car and head back to East Tennessee. Yeah. And um, we'll keep pushing along here. I heard the governor say he had an Ashland City event coming up. So, yeah, so we need to be tracking and see where... Actually, we need to track and see where his East Tennessee things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. So y'all need to... Yeah. And you guys really need to come. This is the first one I've ever been to. Have you ever been to one, Sarah? Mm -hmm. It's... Most decent food but the <laughs> the lecture is just hearing it from the horse's mouth because for me I was sitting home thinking oh if I could just get to the governor if I could just get to the governor well it's not and, the key and I'll tell you you can always it always creates an opportunity to tell the story yeah. so just like at our table I mean they were small tables and but there was a couple there and we just start telling them the story mm -hmm. well he was an educator and she was what was she mm -hmm. I forget what she did before I forget. Anyway. The CASA worker. Oh, yeah. She'd been involved with CASA. Right. So, <laughs> so and you know, and, and even though people, we're like, oh, we hate CASA because of this. But they are, some of the people who've been in it and are no longer in it have seen the problems with it. Yeah. yeah. So, you get to tell the story. You get to uh, share that we have Family Forward Project on Facebook. We have 14,000 people. You know, please join us. Oh, and as a matter of fact, the lady that got us set up in this room here at the college was talking about her her daughter uh, wanting to be a great uh, activist and so I gave her our stuff and I said she needs to get tuned into mm -hmm. us so reminder again also so Mark Green had a big uh, picnic on Saturday night I did not go because I totally needed some rest uh, but I understand there were about 500 people there which is really good but Byron Byron Bush is going to be running for if you're in Tennessee he's going to be running for U.S. Senate and I've known him for a really long time. He is, um, he's going to be great. So I look forward to working with him and that the Tennessee Senate race is going to be really interesting. All right. Oh, and Je uh, Governor Bevins in Kentucky lost. Uh, he was a great hope of ours. I'd already had an in and a contact with him. He lost by 5,000 votes out of like three and a half million votes. And so I think there's going to be some other things happening up there. So keep your eyes on Kentucky. Okay. All right. We're going to, we're going to log off. We'll see y'all. Bye-bye.